a journey from the past to the edge of tomorrow. I'm Tanya Hall, and joining me is Dr. Andrew Maynard, author and associate dean of Arizona State University's College of Global Futures. Welcome, Dr. Maynard. It's a pleasure to be here. So give us a quick summary of your professional background, please. So I started life as a physicist. Um, because I was a failed biologist and a failed chemist. Um, spent many years doing physics research, um, but for the last 20 years, I've really been interested in big questions around innovation, and more importantly, how we develop new technologies in a way which is socially responsible and actually leads to a better future. Uh, so in that, I, I still sometimes call myself a physicist, but I really touch on a, a wealth of other disciplines and other ways of thinking and seeing the world, including the humanities and the social sciences sciences. Your second book, Future Rising, A Journey from the Past to the Edge of Tomorrow, just hit the shelves. In your Twitter post announcing the book's release, you say it's never been more urgent that we rethink how we build a more vibrant, just, and sustainable future together. What's driving that urgency? A number of things. Um, and of course, I, lots of people say this. Um, but one of the things that really strikes me in my work is we're standing on a knife edge at the moment as human society. And that sounds dramatic. Um, but also when you look at different trends in not only technology innovation, but also society, you can begin to see where this comes from. Um, so if you look, for instance, at what we're doing with technology, we're now accelerating our ability to change the world around us, whether it's with the atoms and molecules through nanotechnology, whether it's manipulating DNA, or whether it's creating brand new worlds um, through uh, digital technologies going all the way up to artificial intelligence. So that in itself is fundamentally changing the ways that we can affect the future. But then when you throw into the mix the fact that we're living on a constrained planet, so there are only, only so many things we can do before we hit planetary boundaries, and we're within a global society that is almost changing on a daily basis. We have everything in the mix for a complex system which is hitting a tipping point. And to me, this means that we're at a point where we can either build an incredible future or we can build something which becomes an awful mess. The one thing that isn't going to happen is that the future is going to carry on the same as the past did. Along those lines, you have a chapter about transformation. You allude to the fact that for most of human history, the, the pace of change was measured in decades or generations. Today, it's measured in weeks and quarters. Has the rate of change accelerated to the point where we can no longer keep up? I don't know whether it's that we can't keep up. We can't keep up in certain ways. And of course, this is really tricky um, because it depends how you measure that rate of change. If you measure it in terms of what we can do with digital technologies, we are accelerating like nobody's business. On the other hand, if you look at um, how we're developing more physical technology, is where we're actually making stuff, um, it still takes somewhere between 10 to 20 years between the, the original idea of something and what we can actually do. So we're not accelerating as fast there. What is changing is how we're putting the different pieces together. So if you think about sort of all these innovations as a, a box of Legos, a box of Legos is massive now compared to what it was even 10 or 20 years ago. And so the things we can build are just immeasurably more than they were in the past. And this, I think, is where things are changing more rapidly than ever. Um, and as we build these things with this sort of uh, sort of metaphorical box of Legos, I think what we can do is far outstripping our understanding of how to do that smartly or wisely. And, and that's where some of the concerns come in. You chose an interesting method of, of telling a grand story by breaking it up into a series of short chapters, kind of like short links forming a long chain. Tell us how you use these links to take your reader from vibrating atoms to human morals and ethics. Yeah, I, that's, I like the, the analogy of the, the, the chain with links. Uh, another one that people have used is the idea of a mosaic, lots of little bits creating a bigger picture. So the challenge I had when I set out, I was to write a book um, that really captured the essence of um, what our relationship with the future is and what the future even means. And then the reality is you can't do that in any simple way because 
this, the future is this really complex, almost unknowable thing. And to even begin to make sense of it, you've got to put everything in the mix from basic science, physics, chemistry, biology, evolution, all the way through to the subtle things that make us who we are as humans, our, our beliefs, our fears, our hopes, our aspirations, all the way down to how we think about the future. Um, and uh, short of writing a whole encyclopedia on this, which of course nobody would read, the most obvious way forward seemed to be to take a lot of different tiles, a lot of different vignettes, but tie them together so they created this bigger picture of what the future is and how we can think differently about it. So that, that was where I started from. But I also wanted this to be a really accessible book. Because, uh, again, there's no point in writing a book about the future that nobody can read or its only purpose in life is as a doorstep rather than something that's inspiring and enlightening. So I wanted to keep things short and sharp and inspiring. And this comes back to this idea of this chain, lots of little bits that are interesting on their own, but they tie together to create this bigger picture and just open up new ways of thinking about the future. Well, it was an easy and fun read. So you definitely Good. succeeded there. From both a biological and technological perspective, can the human race expand permanently and thrive off this planet? That's a really big question. I don't know is the answer. I think there is a possibility. And, and of course, this is part of the amazing thing of being human. We can actually ask that question. Just the fact that we can ask the question seriously about could we expand off Earth? Could we maybe go to the moon or Mars and just keep on going? Is incredibly uniquely human because it shows that we've got this capacity to, to imagine a future which is utterly different from the present. And then we can start to ask, well, how could we make this happen? How could we use our different technologies, our science, our social constructs and systems to make this happen? So I, I don't know whether we can. There are some incredible hurdles there just from the science and the technology alone. But human history has shown us that where we begin to exercise our imagination and our future building capacity, we can do things that might otherwise have been unimaginable. Dr. Andrew Maynard, Associate Dean of Arizona State University's College of Global Futures and author of Future Rising, a journey from the past to the edge of tomorrow. If somebody wants to connect with you, what's the best way they can do that? Oh, lots of ways. I Google, obviously. I hang out on Twitter. Um, the handle is 2020science um, there. Um, you can also find out more about the book as well as links to other stuff I do at uh, futurizingbook.com com, which is a great place to start because as well as more information about the book and some of the backstory, it also links to my academic stuff at Arizona State University. Thanks again, Andrew. This and has been a pleasure. As always. Find more of my interviews right here, YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, or at tanyahall.net. Thanks for watching.